Hello, my name is Julie Metcalf and I'm a tutor for the WEA and I'm going to show you a short project that you can make. It's a mosaic project to make a mosaic plant pot and it's something that's relatively easy and quick to do and you don't need to buy lots and lots of resources and it may be that some of the resources that you need you may already have at home and you may only need to order the mosaic tiles and the cement and the grout. So here is an example of the mosaic plant pot that I have made before and it just gives you an idea of what you can create. You can see it has different mosaic tiles on and I've just inserted a few gems, glass faux gems for a little bit of interest and you can insert those or you can put coins in it just to make it a little bit different. It's also great if you want to make some gifts for Christmas or gifts for birthday presents as it's something that's not too large and that you can store and it's quick, easy and it gives you something that you can give to somebody that's homemade. The first thing is to talk through the items that you need to make your mosaic plant pot. So first and foremost, you need a terracotta plant pot. Now this one is approximately five inches across the top and this is a good size to start it's a good start to size of project i just got this from the local garden center the next thing that you need is some masking tape i'll explain why in a minute You can see here that I have a selection of mosaic tiles. These are square glass mosaic tiles and they come in a range of colours. I've chosen oranges and reds. You can choose all sorts of different colours. You can buy these online and we will give you a list of suppliers at the end of this video. I also like to include a few faux gems, these little ones that are inserted into here. And you can buy those from shops that sell homewares, or if you want these ones that are coloured, you can get them um, online from mosaic suppliers. You also need some old yogurt pots or margarine tubs mixing your cement and your grout. You need two for this project because you need one to mix your cement and one to mix the grout. To go along with those you need some mixing sticks. I use these craft, um, craft lollipop sticks. You can use these or you can use um, the labels, plant labels that you can get from the garden centre, the plastic ones or wooden ones. They're ideal. You need to have some cement. I buy this online from an online supplier. And this is flexible cement, as is the grout, which means that it can tolerate, it can withstand low and high temperatures so it doesn't crack and break. That means that it's ideal if you want your mosaic to go outside and you don't want your pot to um, get damaged by the frost, your mosaic to get damaged by the frost. You need some grout and again I buy this from an online supplier and it's flexible so it can withstand the low and the high temperatures. Towards the end of your project you will need a sponge. I use these kitchen sponges with the rough edge it's really good for cleaning off the excess grout when you're tidying up your project at the end. You will need some water for when you're mixing your cement and your grout. And I also have handy an old barbecue skewer because I find it really useful for tidying up my project and removing any excess grout and cement that's ground onto the tiles. Really importantly is health and safety. Both the grout and the cement is really drying on your hands, so wearing gloves is really recommended. I've got some um, vinyl gloves here, but you can wear rubber gloves, kitchen rubber gloves, 
um, or latex gloves if you're not allergic to it, um, just to protect your hands. And I also recommend when you're mixing the cement, the grout, that you wear a mask. And this just protects you from breathing in the dust that um, comes up when you're mixing the cement and the grout. Um, it, if you're not able to get hold of a proper mask, you can um, put a scarf in front of your face, anything to protect you from breathing in the dust. So you acknowledge you are only mixing very small quantities. It's still important. To start your project, you'll see that I've put down some newspaper to protect the surface. Mosaic can be quite messy, so I recommend using old newspaper or some polythene sheeting to protect your table or your work surface. For a mosaic um, plant pot of this size, you need approximately 65 to 70 of these glass mosaic tiles. So bear that in mind when you're placing your order. The first thing that you need to do is to put some masking tape around the top. This just protects it because um, it's best not to put any mosaic tiles on the top. Because of the spacing and the size, it can look really untidy if you try and put them on the top. This, this ends up being too much grout surrounding them. So I always mask it off. Once you've done that, I recommend just wetting your plant pot all over on the outside. And the reason we do this is because terracotta is porous and it drinks the water. And when you start adding your cement, it seeps the water out and sometimes it means your tiles don't stick very well. So by wetting it in advance it ensures that it's already had a good drink, it's not going to take it out of your cement. I always recommend to people that they plan out the colours of their tiles in advance. So decide whether you want to have all one colour at the top or it's just going to be random but have a think about it in advance. So now we can get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix some cement. Now it's a little bit like icing sugar. You've got to add the water really gradually. I'll just put my gloves on now. So just add a little bit of water. Now I've added a little bit too much water. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit more cement. And I suggest just adding a small quantity at a time. It dries out really quickly, so it's better to keep mixing it in batches rather than mix it all at once for the entire plant pot. And you need it to form a nice smooth paste, so not too dry, but not too wet and runny either. Nice consistency. It's better to be slightly wetter than dry because if it's dry it dries really really quickly so when you're working on your pot i recommend having it this way up and you will just add a little bit of cement at a time and i recommend adding your tiles to this top layer and working round first 
don't try and add your tiles all over because it, it, it gets messy. So you will just add your tiles one by one. And it's really important to ensure that you have a small two millimetre gap between your tiles. Small gap here because that helps give it stability. Also, try not to get your cement right through. As you can see here I have, and it's sometimes good to actually take that out because when you grout it, your grout will go in there. So you don't need too much cement or grout. So you'll work your way round. You may find it easier to have it down on a table and work and twist it. I'm just holding it up for the camera. So you work your way round, gradually mix in a bit more cement and grout as you go. Remembering to leave your little gap between the tiles. Once you've done this row, you can then do the next row. And it always looks best. I'm just doing this to show you. I know I've not finished my, my row, but I want to just show you. Always looks best if you place them so that the one underneath or above in this case, would, would be underneath, is actually between them. So rather than having them lined up, it's better, it looks more effective to have them placed in between. I'm going to keep it that way, otherwise it's falling down. Now you may find as you work round that you haven't got a gap for a full tile. You might need to either use one of these gems or a small coin to fill the gap because we're going to try and do this project without having to cut any tiles. You might just need to adjust them, space them a little bit. So you basically work your way around like that and just add in a little bit of cement at a time. Once you've done that, you'll have a pot that looks like this. Now you can see I have cut the odd tile. So for example here there was a little gap and I did cut the odd tile. Now I don't need you don't need to um, buy some mosaic nippers but if you did have some or you wanted to be able to cut them these are the mosaic nippers that you can use and um, like I say for this project you can probably space them adequately and get by without having to cut any tiles. Um, but you can buy these mosaic clippers from online suppliers. If you are using these, please take care and please wear some goggles. Um, I have some plastic goggles that I wear. Um, if you wear glasses, obviously they will protect your eyes. Because they are glass and they do shard, they send shards flying. So it is best to cut them by um, covering them with your hand. And only put in the nippers about a third of the way into the tile rather than right across because that tends to send them shattering and splintering. It's a little bit of an art practicing. Position where you have stuck all your tiles to your plant pot all the way around your plant pot and you've given it about 24 hours to set and to dry and you can test whether the tiles have fully stuck down. Once it's feeling secure, um, I am recommending 24 hours. Sometimes it might be five or six hours, but as long as you're confident that these tiles aren't going to move and that they've set, you're ready then at that point to grout it. So to grout your plant pot, you need your yogurt pot or your plastic pot. And you get a small amount of the grey grout. 
usually about a third to a quarter of the yogurt pot. And just mix a tiny little bit of water with your mixing stick. To a nice consistency. A fluid consistency. But not too runny. I'm going to add a little bit more grout. And the next part is to apply this all over your pot. Now you need to ensure that it's between all the gaps. And you work your way round the entire pot. And it's really important to also do these bits at the end underneath. You don't want any gaps under here because that's where the salt can get in if you put it outside and break the tiles, make them loose. So you work your way round and you clean off the excess grout with your stick, but also using your sponge and a bit of water and continue working round your entire plant pot like that. Sometimes you get little air pockets in between the gaps in the tiles and you need to go back and fill them in with a little bit more grout. The last part of your mosaic project is to clean all the excess grout off your tiles. So for that you need an old rag little bit of water and what you need to do is damp the cloth, the rag, and gradually work your way round, taking off all the excess grout and then as it dries you can then use the dry part of the cloth to shine it up. If there's any parts where there's some stuck on grout, any stubborn bits of grout or cement, return to using a damp cloth or this is where you can use the cocktail barbecue skewer to really work that off. This is actually a bit of brown paper that the tile was stuck to. So you need to leave it a couple of hours after grouting it before you then start to clean it really thoroughly. And you would continue on round, cleaning it off until it's shiny. And if there's any really stubborn bits, you can use a bit of sandpaper. And the very last bit is to peel off the masking tape from the top, leaving a nice clean edge to your plant pot. So thank you very much for watching this. I hope you have completed your project and you have a pot that looks similar to this one that I did yesterday. Thank you very much for watching the video and we have put some websites up for where you can get your resources to make a similar plant pot. Thanks everyone.